On this episode of Automower Answers, we're going to take a look at where you start out at to diagnose the dreaded flashing blue light and no loop signal error message. So you found your automower just sitting in the middle of the yard or you got the notification on your phone saying no loop signal or you just happened to look at your charging station and you see a flashing blue light. What do you do now? Flashing blue light means no loop signal. And everybody usually wants to jump to right away, I've got a problem with a broken wire. Now, there's a process you have to go through to diagnose this properly, and it could end up saving you a lot of time and a lot of headaches. So we're going to show you where to start and work your way out from the beginning. The flashing blue light error, or no loop signal error, is probably the one that automower owners and technicians fear the most. Why? Because it usually means there's a broken wire somewhere in the system. And God only knows where it is, right? You know, it could be so many different places and there's all that wire that's buried underground. And you just know it's going to be a headache if you don't know what you're doing. So we're going to show you here now what you can do to help make this go a little bit easier on yourself. As you can see from the picture, I mean, this is a small layout. Uh, a lot of you guys have way more islands and a bigger area that you're mowing. So there's just more wire being used. And... It's not like you're going to go out there and rip it all up and check, you know, to see where it's broken at and then put it back in. So we're going to help you narrow this down. So with the auto mower, we're going to treat it just like a regular mower. This is an electrical problem. And just like with a regular mower's electrical problem, you're going to start at the source. The first thing you're going to need to do is check your outlet. Make sure your outlet's working properly and putting out the correct voltage. Make sure a breaker didn't trip or something like that. And you can kind of rule that out because if a breaker did trip, there's usually no flashing light or no light at all, I should say, in the charging station. So a uh, good thing to do, though, is just take your power supply and uh, hook it up somewhere else to another outlet. And then we're going to test to see if the power supply itself is allowing the proper voltage coming out to go to the charging station. Now you might say, what is the proper voltage? Well, all the power supplies have that listed right on them, right on the sticker here. You can see here that the output voltage is clearly labeled right there, 28 volts. Now that is 28 volts DC, direct current. Right there to the left of that, you can see the input voltage. That's of course your outlets. So if you know your outlet's good and you've tested it, you know, you've got enough power coming through there. You don't have to worry so much about that. The big thing is what is coming out of this power supply and going into the transport or into the charging station. That's what we want to check. So we're going to go ahead and check that. So here we have our power supply and at the cord here, you can see we pulled back the uh, insulation so we could tell which two of the holes of the three were used. And we stuck some paper clips in there because the probes from the multimeter, of course, wouldn't fit into the end of the plug. Now you want to make sure if you do something like this that the wires never touch or anything, but you can see right there, 28 volts DC output, and we've got our multimeter hooked up, and we've got 27.7 volts DC. So this is working great. We don't have an issue with our power supply, and believe me, you do have issues with these power supplies every now and then. Do not just rule that out. So of course now the next thing to check is your low voltage cable. That is the cable that is used between the power supply and the charging station. What we're going to do is we're going to unplug this from the back of the charging station. We have it plugged into the power supply, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pull the insulation back, see which holes are used out of these three, because there's only two of them used out of the three, and we're going to check for voltage there. So we know it was 28 volts coming out of the power supply, and that's what we need to have here at the end of our low voltage cable. And there we got it, 27.8 volts. So our power supply and our low voltage cable are working great, no issues there, nothing happened to either of them. So we can rule those out. And again, don't just assume that these two components are fine and dandy and okay. This is like having loose battery cables on your regular lawn tractor or on your car. If there's not a good connection there, or that transformer is not putting out enough power, which I've seen some of them that were only putting out about two to three volts and they just won't have enough power to run the mower. You'll get that flashing blue light on there. So always start at the beginning and work your way out. So of course, the next thing we're gonna check, the charging station itself. So we're gonna put our probes on the tabs here that you connect the boundary wires to on the charging station. And we're gonna check to see what our voltage is coming out of here. 
So we got the probes on there, and you can see we got 31 volts coming out of there. Now, of course, this multimeter is not a not the best of the best, but at any rate, we know this is working fine. We have enough voltage air coming out of the charging station. So we know all of these electrical components are good to go. So now we can work our way out from here. So by now, some of you are probably saying, well, this hasn't shown me anything because all those things you tested were good. Well, believe me, I've ran into these issues. I wouldn't be telling you how to check them and showing you that if it wasn't a possibility or a strong possibility that one of those components could have been your problem. Why do you want to go walking around your entire yard and digging up wire when your solution could have been right there at the charging station? And for the few seconds that it takes to check those components, it is well worth it. So now what do we do? We know everything from, from the outlet to the charging station is working great and the way it should. So now we're back to our problem is probably somewhere out in the yard. And I say probably because, well, there's still a chance it could be right there at the charging station, but we'll get to that in a second. So what are we going to do to try to figure out where our issue is at if it is out in our yard? We've got all this wire ran. What can we do to make this go a little easier? Simple. We're going to swap out one of our boundary wires with our guide wire. And this is where we tell a lot of people, if you're thinking about a 300 series, a 310, a 315, a 315X, step up to a 430X because in the long run, not only is it a better machine, but it's going to help you out in other ways that you're not even thinking about. And this is one of them. Because we're going to show you how you can use a guide wire to help narrow down where you might have a potential break in the boundary wire in your mower's loop system. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to disconnect our right boundary wire from the charging station. And then we're going to take our guide wire right here, and we're going to connect it in place of that boundary wire. So we have just created a new loop, a smaller loop out in the yard. We are dividing the yard into sections now by using the guide wire and a perimeter wire. You could also do this using a guide wire and a guide wire. You can see we got the green light. That means this new section we created is good to go and working fine. So our break is not anywhere in that section. So here's a better look at what we just did. Remember that picture a little while back of the yard with the one guide wire? So now we just used the guide wire and we just used our perimeter wire to create this section right here that you see in the blue. So now we know that everything in the blue is good because we have a green light solid green light for everything in that section. So now if we had a second guide wire, we could do the same thing again and we can narrow down another section of our yard till we got to the section that had the flashing blue light. That would tell us where our trouble spot is at in the yard. It would help us narrow it down. It wouldn't give us a precise location, but it would be a lot better than having to go through the entire system and trying to figure it out. So let's take a look here at what would happen if we had a second guide wire. So now we have a second guide wire, that light blue line, dotted line there, is our second guide wire. So now what we can do is we can use that guide wire and replace a perimeter wire or boundary wire with that guide wire on the back of the charging station, just like we did in that last picture there. So now we could do this a couple ways, but the best way to do it right off the bat is take out the largest area you can and see if you got an issue there. So that would look something like this. So we take this second guide wire and we replace a boundary wire with this second guide wire on the back of the charging station and we can create another section like this that you see in orange. Now if we have a flashing blue light we know we have to break this down a little bit more. But if we have a solid green light for this much of the system then that means this much of the system is good. So we've just eliminated that entire section of it. And we know that our problem is basically going to be between the charging station and around the front of the house, down the driveway, and somewhere there where it ties back into that guide wire. Everything else around her that's an orange, if that green light is solid, or if the light is a solid green light, we know that everything in orange is good. 
And this is how you narrow down your area. So you don't have to just walk the entire property and try to figure out where you have wires, where you might've had splices, things like that. This will save you a lot of time and a lot of headaches. So just an important reminder here, before you start doing any of this, make sure you have your wires labeled so that you can see what they are, you know what they are, and once you're all done with this, you get them back in the places that they're supposed to be. I've seen a couple guys do this and they've had wires crisscrossed and switched all around and you know it just caused them more headaches. So if you have your wires labeled correctly and they're legible, this won't be an issue to do this. Just hook them back up then to where they belong in the charging station and you'll be good to go. Okay, so you narrowed down what section of your yard the broken wire is in. And the first thing you want to do, especially if it involves a perimeter wire, before you go walking out through your yard, check the end of that wire. Make sure that that connector that is going on to the back of the charging station isn't corroded, rusted, or has some kind of damage or frayed or anything like that. If you got enough slack there, just go ahead and put a new one on, just to make sure. That'll save you a lot of time and headaches too. I've seen this happen with guys before, and they pull their hair out for hours, and it turns out just being a bad connection right there at the charging station. So always start to check, start out with the simplest stuff. Start by checking those things that are right there and easy to do. So after that, and you've got this section narrowed down, um, next thing you want to do is you want to try to find... Uh, somewhere in there where the brake may be, something to get you close. So here's where you can use an AM radio and try to squelch the signal. I've done this many times, it's worked for me. Um, you could get a uh, wire tester that sends a tone out. Um, I've seen a couple guys do this and it's worked well. I recently bought one of these, I've tried it a few times and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, Best bet is to get the earbuds to use with it. That way you can actually hear the tone. Because if you're just holding that thing down at the ground and, you know, you're trying to listen to it over top of the wind and traffic or other things going on outside, you're not going to hear it. So make sure to use some earbuds with it. So those are the main two ways, you know, just it'll get you close. Um, you've already got it narrowed down, so you got a pretty good idea of where your issue is at. And, you know, use one of these two tools here. And this will help you get a little bit closer so you're not digging up your entire wire system. You'll only have to dig up maybe a few feet of it or, you know, every couple feet. And then you can give the wire a little bit of a tug. If the wire is broken, it's going to pull right out if you tug on it. So the other thing to do, too, is before you, you start digging into anywhere, look for obvious signs like some tire tracks that somebody might have ran over it, you know, when it was wet out or... Um, you know, the ground to be dug up like a skunk or some other animal was tearing it up or some kind of disruption there in the grass or the soil. These are the places you're going to want to start at and you're going to want to start there checking for the tone coming through the wire or the, the squelching of the AM radio. Um, I've seen where Comcast has come in and ran some new lines to a cable box and ripped up a guy's um, automower boundary wire. Um, somebody's come through and did airification on a neighbor's yard and cut up pieces of the uh, boundary wire for an, a property next door with an auto mower. So uh, anything's possible, you know, look for signs like that. That'll help save you some time. But AM radio and a tone tester um, seem to be the two best ways to go. And it, nothing is going to be a piece of cake, that's for sure. But Start out at the beginning, make sure everything's working properly from your outlet to your charging station and then from your charging station out to there. Just, you know, create smaller loops, section off your lawn to save yourself some time and then go looking for these obvious signs. And like I say, worst comes to worst, just, you know, dig down in there, find a wire in a couple of spots and just give it a little bit of a tug. See if it feels loose. If it does, that wire will come pulling right out of there and you can just lay it down on top of the soil and get a good idea as to where your breaking point was at. So hopefully this helps you guys out. If you ever do come across the dreaded flashing blue light and keep checking back because we're going to have more videos to give you guys more help with these automowers and make things a little bit easier to diagnose and troubleshoot. Thanks for watching.